Hello and a very warm welcome to our worship for Sunday the 14th of June. It was recently reported that Google had noticed a 50% increase in the number of people who have been searching online the word prayer during the coronavirus. And churches around the country have certainly noticed an increase in the number of people who have been viewing online services. Now it might be too early to ascertain what level of impact this is going to have on church and faith in the country, but there does appear to be a genuine searching, a genuine interest, and people are engaging with church in new and creative ways. Maybe putting services online is just making it easier for people to access services and Christian content. But in our gospel reading today, Jesus says that the harvest is ripe, but the workers are few and to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into that harvest field. And we're going to be reflecting on that in our service today. Clearly, there are great opportunities uh, for us as Christians to share the love and the good news of Jesus with the world around us. And I hope and I pray that both as individuals, but also as a church, we will respond to that call and be prayerfully reflecting on how is God calling us to serve him in the world. So as we begin our worship today, let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, God of the harvest, it's so wonderful that we can worship you together today. We ask, Lord, your blessing to be upon us in this time of worship. And Lord, we pray for the people, the places, the situations, Lord, where we would love to see the kingdom of God come. Lord, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So help us, Lord, to see the harvest that is around us and how you are calling us as individuals and as the people of God to serve you in the world. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that met this heart adore hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship.
as Christians, we are called to be the Lord's witnesses in the world. But we do often fail to be good witnesses to Jesus. So we have an opportunity now in our service to say sorry to God. Sorry for the times when we have failed him and also sorry for the times when we have failed those around us and times when we have not witnessed to his love. So let's just keep a moment of quiet as we reflect on the events of the past week. I'm going to lead us in a confession and you may want to respond uh, to these words. So when I say, Lord, be merciful, you may like to reply with the words, forgive us our sin. Lord, be merciful, forgive us our sin. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful, forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Jesus Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful, forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with our whole heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful, forgive us our sins. And because we know that the Lord loves us, because we know that we have a merciful Father who promises to forgive those who truly repent, let us receive now his forgiveness. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are our faithful and loving Father and forgive those who truly repent. Help us to receive now your forgiveness and help us, Lord, to lead lives that bring you the honour and the glory. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, we pray. Amen. Esther is now going to read to us our passage for today. Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 to chapter 10 verse 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the zealot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Hi, it's great to be with you. And if you're able to stand up, why don't you stand up wherever you are and join in with our actions. And the first action is gonna be creating this globe with our hands. Are you ready? 
Joanne is now going to lead us in a short reflection. If I were to give this passage a title, it would be the disciples move out of their comfort zone, or perhaps framed more positively, the disciples move into their courage zone. You see, up until this point, the disciples had been passengers on the journey, onlookers as Jesus proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God, healing people from every kind of sickness and disease. And here we see them about to be catapulted off the cliff edge, told that they'd be going solo, doing things themselves without Jesus there to take a lead or get them out of a tricky situation. We see that the answer to the prayer, send more workers, is to send those who follow Jesus. I confess I used to get really quite nervous when I knew that this passage was being spoken about in church. I wasn't too sure that I wanted to be one of the workers who were sent. I wasn't keen on doing something that might be embarrassing or risky or which involved some level of personal cost. But the truth is, Jesus is the recruit in the recruitment business and wants everyone who follows him to be actively involved in spreading the good news of the kingdom. I've been a worker in the harvest field and yes, he does want us to be willing to step out um, into our courage zone to share the good news of the kingdom of God. And the good news is that in this passage, there's some, uh, some keys to encourage and guide us. The first is Jesus' motivation. Jesus was utterly motivated by compassion for the crowds who came to hear him. We read of his compassion throughout the gospels for the sick, the dying, the bereaved, those who were excluded from society, the hungry. We see him weeping as he stood at the grave of a close friend. He wasn't motivated by personal gain, by selfish ambition or fame, but by a deep love and compassion for humanity as a whole, which was fleshed out 
by the way that he dealt with the individuals he encountered. One of the values that has been recognised and really honoured um, over the last few months has been that of compassion and the way that this has been demonstrated. I remember reading about an ITU team and within all of the high tech, how they had gently and carefully worked as a team together to provide care to patients. For carers who have been family to those with dementia, for those who've held the hands of the dying and who have sought to bring comfort and relief. For those who have wept where they're not able to show the compassion and care that they wanted because of the risk of infection. Because compassion isn't just about an emotion. There has to be some practical outworking. And just think, if we were to have only a little of Jesus' compassion and that that compassion motivated us into action, what impact would it have on the words we speak or the acts of kindness we do? How, how would it affect how we meet the many needs that we see around us? How we care for the vulnerable or the excluded or those on the fringe? What difference would it make to our community or our workplace? Those places in our society and world where there's so much need. What would it look like if we prayed, break my heart for what breaks yours, everything for your kingdom's cause, and then did something about it? Secondly, Jesus told his disciples to share what they knew. At this point, the disciples didn't understand that Jesus was the Messiah, much less what that meant. They knew that Jesus spoke about the coming of the kingdom of God and that it was good news. They had seen people healed from all kinds of illnesses, but their understanding was incomplete. And Jesus didn't expect them to know everything. He simply asked his disciples to share what they had heard and experienced, to point people to Jesus, to share that God's kingdom was close and that it was good news. The point is, we don't need to understand everything. We are asked simply to share what we've heard and experienced of God, to point others to Jesus, but not necessarily to provide the answers. And thirdly, Jesus gives authority. The disciples had seen Jesus heal, but by themselves they could do absolutely nothing. They could no more heal anyone than they could fly to the moon. And given that space travel wasn't around 2,000 years ago, that wasn't going to happen. But Jesus gave them the authority they needed to demonstrate what God's kingdom looked like. To be able to speak, to be able to heal, to be able to drive out demons. He empowered and enabled them to go and do those things that he asked them to do. And so the good news for us is that we don't have to go in our own strength but we can go equipped and empowered as God fills us with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who helps us understand who Jesus is and the deep love that God has for us. The Holy Spirit who brings new, new life and understanding. This passage comes pre-Easter and pre-Pentecost. The disciples had an incomplete and an imperfect understanding of who Jesus was and what he came to do. But we read this account post-Easter and post-Pentecost with a greater understanding and experience of the good news that Jesus came to bring and of the Holy Spirit who equips and empowers us to do those things that are asked of us. We see the transformation of the disciples after Pentecost emerging, or perhaps bursting would be a better description, from the locked room that they had been meeting in. They were filled with and transformed by the Holy Spirit, passionate about sharing the good news of Jesus. They just couldn't wait to tell it. And they demonstrated the kingdom of God as they spoke, as they healed the sick, and as they reached out to the vulnerable and needy in their community. Our passage finishes with the words, freely you have received, so freely you should give. Full of the Holy Spirit, 
they just wanted to share what they knew to be true. For most of us, our world has been smaller and we've been more isolated over the last three months. And as a church family, we have been more physically dispersed. At some point, we will emerge. And although the church has been very much open for business, we will once again be more of a visible presence in the community. If we're to th a think how this passage relates to us in the here and the now, I wonder what our response as individuals and as a church family will be. Is God asking us to step into a courage zone? If he is, what does it look like? Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. God is in the recruitment business and he calls and equips all who follow him and he can and does use each one of us with all of our imperfections and weaknesses. So let's ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit, to fill us with his compassion, to equip and to empower us so that we can share by word and action our experience of God. Oh, 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. One of the mission partners that we support at St. James is Miriam Westfall. Miriam is based in Newcastle working for the organisation Agape Student Life. I have been catching up with her during the week and first of all I asked her to explain a little bit about what the work and the vision of Agape Student Life is. Hey I'm Miriam, I'm part of Agape UK, I work with the student arm of the organisation. We're a Christian mission organization that's part of an international one called called crew but we're the british arm and our goal is to help people to, to to discover jesus together we want to see the 97 percent of people in the uk who don't know jesus and aren't connected to christians to discover jesus and we want to make sure that the three percent of people who do actively passionately follow jesus feel confident and equipped to be able to reach the 97. we engage with students on spiritual questions and um, help them explore where they're at in life and faith and if they're christians to help them to build confidence and practical skills to share their faith naturally so they can help other people discover jesus around them Obviously, life has been affected in all sorts of ways by the virus. Um, obviously, it will have had a, a huge impact in terms of students. So a lot of students or most students will have had to return home to their families uh, and away from college and university. So how has coronavirus impacted your work and the work of Agape Student Life? My life has turned two-dimensional, basically. <laughs> from having meetups with people in person in coffee shops and student gatherings. It's very, it's very two dimensional now on screens. We are um, trying to continue to connect with the people that we were building relationships with, but um, doing that over the phone, on Zoom, on Skype, you name it, we've tried it. <laughs> um, and I think it's it's changed as well because um, students are feeling more fatigue with their screens and having to do everything online. So um, that reduces their capacity and our capacity as well for how much we can, ha yeah, how much are we able to engage with the big questions and um, yeah, what, what do students actually need right now? Uh, and ha have there been any positives to come out of this time? Yeah, there are um, two students in in Newcastle who were um, there. We're not. Um, one of them is not a Christian. One of them is a very new Christian. And when lockdown started and their their extracurricular stuff was cancelled, um, one of my teammates, Johnny, he reached out to them and asked, would you like to do more Bible study together and explore what Christians believe in more depth? And both of them were like, oh yeah, sure. I have plenty of time now. And so he's been meeting up with them each week to, um, yeah, with this unexpected time um, to explore who Jesus is. Now, many of us in church will maybe have children or grandchildren who, who are students or certainly uh, have students maybe normally living on our streets and uh, around Carlisle. So in what way do you think we can be supporting students at the moment? 
I think if you know any students personally, it would be really great to encourage them, um, especially ones who are just graduating um, because they can't celebrate their graduation with their friends in the same way. And, or, or if they're a first year student um, who has expected a lot from their university experience and hasn't had that fulfilled. Um, yeah, to encourage them that what they're doing matters and that they're seen and they're not just petering out into invisibility and being alone, but um, their, their hard work is worthwhile and noticed. And if there are any who maybe you don't know them so well, but you know that they are on your street, then this might be a good opportunity, um, particularly if they're not living with their families, because there are some international students who have been stranded in the UK, um, far from home and quite alone, then um, yeah, have fun, get creative, think of practical ways that you can, um, you can reach out, bake them some cookies. Um, but small gestures like that communicate a lot of love. And um, whether you're someone who already knows Jesus or not, when you receive something like that, it can communicate a lot about um, God's care and attention to you. And we can be part of that for students. And finally, um, how can we be praying for you and how can we be praying for the work of Agape Student Life? You can, um, I'll start with Agape um, UK and the student ministry. Um, pray for creativity and wisdom going forward into uncertainty. We want to, like our mission hasn't changed and the church's mission hasn't changed. It's still to um, enjoy God and invite other people into relationship with him too. So our mission hasn't changed, everything else has, and our tools, some things we can't do in person anymore. Um, so we need wisdom and creativity <laughs> to go digital in ways that still connect with, connect people's hearts to Jesus. Um, so digital strategies, that would be our, our main prayer. And for, for me, um, this is a big leadership challenge I wasn't expecting. It's been my first year of co-leading a team. And sometimes that is really fun. But at the moment, it can often be overwhelming. <laughs> and I need, yeah, we need um, strength to persevere, um, to keep loving people well, loving our team well, um, knowing how to create structure in a, in a very undefined place. Um, so yeah, pray for that. Pray for God's guidance. <laughs> Joe is now going to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. I'm just going to start by reading Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Father, we thank you um, that you are a God who loves us and who wants to help us. And we thank you um, that we can come to you in prayer and that um, we know you're listening. Father, we thank you for um, some of the good things that we've been blessed with during this lockdown. We thank you for your creation and the opportunity to enjoy that. And we thank you for our families and for our homes and for the time to spend together. But Father, we pray for those who haven't found it easy, for those who might have been struggling with loneliness or um, with financial difficulties or with, with sick health or with um, a difficult situation at home. Lord, we pray that you will comfort them and that you will, um, that you will help us to know how we can reach out to them and how, how we can show your love to them at the moment. We thank you for all those people that 
do jobs that help us. We thank you for everyone who works in the NHS, in care homes. We thank you for teachers and for all those people who've worked in essential services like shops um, throughout the t this time. Lord, would you give them um, the strength and stamina to continue? And would you, um, yeah, would you would you just help them to do their jobs really well? We pray for the government and um, all of those who are involved in making decisions about um, lockdown and um, moving forward. Lord, we pray that you give them discernment and that you'd, yeah, just guide them and help them to make the right decisions for us. And we pray for all those people that um, are affected by them, particularly those who have to put, put into place um, new guidance when that comes out. We just pray that you'd help them to do that really well. Father, we thank you for um, all of our mission partners, but today we pray especially for Miriam and for her work with Agape. We pray for her and her team, Lord, that you'd help them to um, to be able, still be able to reach out to some students and thank you for the relationships they've already got. And we pray for them to be able to adapt as things change and um, students might be in different places and that you'd, yeah, you'd help, you'd, they'd be able to support all the students they know really well and um, show them your love at this time. Um, we pray for church, we thank you for St James and thank you for um, everything that's been been going on still during lockdown. And we pray particularly for Cornerstone as that reopens this week. We pray for Andy and the team that they be able to um, adapt well to a new way of working and that, um, yeah, that would be, be you'd, you'd, that would be really blessed this week and that people would uh, be welcome back to Cornerstone even if it feels really different. And finally, we pray for all of those who are ill um, and those suffering with um, struggling with bereavement at the moment. Father, we just spend a bit of time now thinking of someone known to us. And let's finish by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive, the, forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
stars that speak of sacrifice Hands that flung stars into space To cool nails surrender This is our God, the servant's King He calls us now Due to the coronavirus, we sadly had to close Cornerstone and the op shop. But I'm delighted to say that Andy is now back at work and we are hoping to reopen Cornerstone as soon as possible. We have a brief update from Andy about what's happening at Cornerstone and what we can expect in the next couple of weeks. Hello everyone, just a quick update from Cornerstone. Um, as you can see behind me, it's looking a little bit different um, we've taken away tables and chairs and in the process of doing it clean at the moment. Um, but this is in preparation for us opening Cornerstone as soon as it's safe um, and as soon as the COVID measures are put in place. I'm hoping that we'll be able to open on Monday the 22nd of June, um, but that all depends on the COVID measures and risk assessments and things like that. We won't be opening until it's as safe as we can possibly make it. Um, for our volunteers and for our customers as well. The plan is to move our op shop premises, so all our clothing and, and bric-a-brac and things like that, into Cornerstone um, and operate Cornerstone as a bit of a charity shop. Um, so selling all those donations, selling the books and the DVDs that we have, as well as opening up our Christian Resource Centre, so we've got quite a few Bibles and, and things like that. Um, and also selling takeaway tea and coffee, hot chocolate, uh, but that has to be drank off the premises. Um, so it's quite a transformation that we're doing. Um, we won't be opening until we have um, social distancing measures in place. So we've got the tape now. I'm still awaiting the screen to go around the till. Um, but yeah, it's really exciting opportunity to do something different with this space, to do it and sort out, um, to do a good clean. So we'll get, once we've got the op shop emptied, we're gonna do a really good clean in there and set up a quarantine area. So when items are donated, they go straight into there for at least 72 hours are cleaned and then are brought into Cornerstone to sell. So there's a lot of work to do. But it's also exciting because this week we're going to be joined by Katie. Katie will be my new deputy manager here in Cornerstone and the op shop um, and starting on Monday. So that's really exciting news. Um, if you join us again next Sunday, we're going to be interviewing Katie. Um, so it's a good opportunity to, to find out a little bit more about her and what, and what she's been doing before joining us here. It would be really helpful to know for people if you're planning on returning um, in any capacity, whether that's in Cornerstone or the op shop, um, when we do reopen. Um, if at all possible, if you're able to make contact with me, that would be incredibly helpful. Um, 01228 549 796. I would greatly appreciate that. Finally, it would be really good if we could have a Zoom meeting on Wednesday this week. 
um, so that I can answer some questions, so that I can show you some of the measures that we're putting in place, and I can also introduce you to Katie as well. Um, so I'll be emailing out the detail with the link for the Zoom. If you don't have an email address um, but would like to join the Zoom meeting, again, if you can make contact with me um, Monday, Tuesday this week, I can give you all the details for that. So hopefully, all being well, we will aim to try and open on Monday the 22nd. Um, it will be reduced opening hours just so that we can um, do a deep clean over lunchtime and before we open and after we close, things like that. But again, more details will emerge during that the course of the week. That's, that's it. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us for our online worship today. 
as many within the church family will know, in July we are going to be joined by Nina Orchard and her family. Nina is going to be a curate with us at St James and within the Two Rivers Mission community and officially begins her curacy in July, although it won't be until later in the month or possibly August that Nina and the family are able to move here to Carlisle from their home in London. But next Sunday we're going to have a very special service where we're going to hear uh, a little bit more about how the curacy is going to work at St James and we're going to hear from Nina herself so please do join us for that service next week. We're going to draw our service to a close today by using a Franciscan prayer of blessing. So let us pray. So may God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half truths and superficial relationships so that you might live deep within your heart. Amen. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom and peace for all. Amen. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. Amen. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world, so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.